My son would like to be taller. He is my stepson, and he's a profession. He wants, he loves football. It's in his body, in his brain. It's not something he got from me, being the stepfather. But I really want to support him at this. He, we've learned some things. We've had some stuff come. We started telling him, like, well, he's a growing boy. We have been really introduced. Um, we have done some Abraham stuff, but we haven't, like, here's all the Abraham stuff. You should trust it and live it yet. We'd like, like to, but we're still working on that for ourselves. Use that as the last-ditch effort. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to. The, before the last ditch. The, are there any thing that we can add or help or say to him um, to, to help him feel that he can grow more because we can have be, do be or have anything you want. Well, how are you helping him to know that that is true? How, how do you convert those words that sound like blah, blah, blah into something meaningful? How, how, do, how do you, how would one go about translating their transmitting or their knowledge to another? Well, I've started using, like, I've started that phrase I was just talking about, and just saying kind of, well, he's a growing, because he's really, um, at the moment, here's the story of what is, is that he is a bit smaller than the other kids his age, and um, he, he plays football where he needs to be taller and whatever and to be able to do what he wants, but he's absolutely brilliant and he's absolutely athletic. Why does he need to be taller? Can't he just be short and knock them down from the bottom? <laughs> it really helps to see when you're seeing a play develop, apparently to be able to see at least the same height or over the players or be intuitive enough that you know what's going on in the play. Well, if the team is organized, they know what they're going to do. And what, okay. the, other, what the other team, they spread out enough that you can more or less see what's right in front of you, and it's the only thing that's right in front of you that you need to do anything about, yes? Okay. Well, I, I don't know. It's Because I, I, I don't know football very well. This is what he's told me, and I'm trying to find but things But he's or arguing phrases for his help. limitations, and we are arguing for his... Oh, that's true. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> So obvious. Ah, I'm learning. In other words, if he, if he was talking about basketball, it would be a, a little bit more justifiable. Okay. Okay. Can I ask one more? Or well, we're not finished with this one okay, yet. Good. But good. So we want to go back to something that is more basic, and that is so. So here you are, you have someone who you care about, who you can feel has a dream. And he's having a hard time believing his own dream because the reality of his life doesn't give him the support of it. His peers don't give him the support of it. The reality just doesn't match up with the dream. So, and you don't want to talk to him yet about Abraham because you don't want to make him a weird kid. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's all right, you can't hurt our feelings. And Esther told Jerry not to tell anyone too. In other words, she, 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 she gets that. She gets it. Their accountants went to the seminar in San Antonio and they called afterward because they've known Jerry and Esther for many years and they said, we thought it was going to be weird. We thought it was going to be like a seance. We thought there were going to be weird people around. They said, it was the nicest group of people that we've ever been around in our life. It was the most fun. So uh, sometimes it's better to let people know what it is rather than to keep them from knowing what it is because we promise you what it is isn't weird and what they think it is, is. <laughs> but all of that aside, so you have someone that you really care about and his life experience does not support his dream. What, when he focuses on how it is, it's hard for him to be a, a believer of his own dream. And so 
you, we're, we're teasing you just a little bit, and, and you think that by throwing in some phrases like you can be or do or have anything that you want, or even you create your own reality, would be enough to offset everything that he's living. In other words, that's a big current. That right. That. And so Agreed. as we have been saying for a very long time, as if it mattered at all, words don't teach. We can't even teach you that words don't teach with words. <laughs> <laughs> words don't teach you see and so there isn't anything that you could say or that we could say that would okay. help him and so what's our objective here our objective is to somehow find a way to help him for a moment here and a moment here and a moment here and a moment here believe his dream in other words our complete objective is to get him in the vortex where his dream is so every time he watches something wonderful on television with one of the, he puts more in his vortex. Every time, every time he feels too small to do that, he puts more in his vortex. In other words, so he's putting all of this in his vortex. And we want to say to you, if you can't get in his vortex where you're believing his dream, then you're of no value to him either. The first thing you got to do is get in the vortex where those possibilities are rendezvousing. You can't inspire him to something from outside the vortex, you see. So yes. the first question you want to ask yourself relative to the upliftment or the helping of anyone, are you worth the trouble of me getting to the vortex for you? <laughs> That's really a good question. Are you worth the trouble of me getting in the vortex? Well, what, what would that require? What trouble would it be for you getting in the vortex? Well, it's really, it, there, there's a big list. You've got to get happy. Am I willing to get happy to help you? Am I willing to believe in your dream to help you? No, I don't think so. That's Aww. way more work than I can do because I'm focused upon reality and you're a scrawny little kid. And it's so much easier for me to see you not living your dream than to see you living your dream. And it would take hard work for me to imagine. It's so much easier <laughs> for me to just observe. It's a lot easier for me to observe what is and, and not be a match to your dream than it is for me to imagine your dream. But do I care enough about you to get in the vortex? That's the first thing that you got to do. And when you get in there, then all kinds of things will occur to you. You can only coax someone into the vortex from in the vortex. That's what inspiration is. You inspire them in. You can't motivate them in. Get in. Get in. Get in. You cannot motivate someone into the vortex. They never go. They never, ever go, you see. So, yes. so what okay. you do is you yes. have dreams. You yes. have your own dreams and you get in the vortex. You demonstrate your own dreams. You teach through the power of your example. You say to him, I cannot create for you, but I can create for me. And these are things that I want. Now, just keep an eye out because here's something that I want right now. What's something that you want right now that is not manifesting in your experience? What do you want? Speak it out loud to him. Okay. Well, right, of course. Yeah. Speak it out loud to him. I'm standing here in this situation and what I want is over here. Mm -hmm. And then let him witness with his own experience. Let him hear you out of the vortex. Let him hear you in the vortex. Let him see you making an effort to be there. Let him okay. see you tuning yourself deliberately. Let him understand that you know that you cannot have this manifestation if you don't tune yourself to it. Teach him about the vortex through the power of your example, you see. And we promise you, he'll get in there and he'll get what he wants. Because there are a lot of people that were smaller than he is that live that dream, you see. And we're not kidding you. Give him that piece of it. He can okay. be big and strong and tough without being tall. Then there's plenty of history to show that. And then talk to him about the center of gravity. Tell him how it's a oh, lot yeah. easier to stay standing when you're low to the ground. Yeah, okay. <laughs> And now, now we've had this conversation. If you start watching some football, you'll see what we mean. Yeah. <laughs>